Hi, family. Okay, a couple of videos ago, I was sharing with you guys this revelation. Like, at least it was a revelation to me about self-righteousness, where we're just kind of talking about how God's fulfilling just the promise of Philippians 2, of us just being unified and just being one in God. And I felt like he was exposing like one side of righteousness, but a couple of days ago, I felt like he was exposing the other side of self-righteousness. I'm sorry, did I sell righteousness? I guess self-righteousness, one side of it. Now he's exposing the other side. And at least in my experience, I've just found that like just different spiritual dynamics have two sides. And if it was just like experiencing that negative a part of oppression, then we wouldn't do it, but there's always a lie that we're going to get something out of it. And so it's so fascinating as the Holy Spirit's just exposing and revealing things, it's easy for us to turn from so we can just acknowledge and put our faith in Jesus and how the Holy Spirit always redirects us to Jesus because in Him, that's where we find our righteousness, our true righteousness. And so, uh, it was cool because I was just sharing a couple of videos ago about when we're using our position with God to esteem others or to esteem ourselves above others, that's actually coming against the unity as opposed to us being in that humble place of trusting in God, believing that he's working in people's lives and serving them where they're at without any judgments or any opinions of how they should be doing it or if they deserve being where they're at, but just coming in like Jesus did and just carrying the love of God for them, just bringing freedom as they're receiving what Jesus has already paid for, which is grace. And so all that to be said, there's something I've been battling with my whole entire life. I can't think of a time that I haven't been battling with this. And then there's a scripture that I've been asking revelation on for, gosh, probably 25 years in John 16. And so I wanted to share that with you guys. But I wanted to read a couple of scriptures really quick just about righteousness because it's such a lofty subject. And I know, you know, we could talk and talk and talk about it, but I just wanted to share a couple of things with you guys. So in Romans 1.17, it says, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. And in Romans 10, this is the Amplified Classic, it says, for being ignorant of righteousness that God ascribes, which makes one acceptable to him in word, thought, and deed, and seeking to establish a righteousness of their own. He's talking about the Jews, like still trying to achieve righteousness through the law. They did not obey or submit themselves to God's righteousness. For Christ is the end of the law, the limit at which it ceases to be. For the law leads up to him who is the fulfillment of its types, and in him the purpose which it was designed to accomplish is fulfilled. That is, the purpose of the law is fulfilled in him as the means of righteousness. So everything the law was leading up to the righteousness that we would find in Jesus. And then how we're, I just love Galatians 5. I love talking about Galatians 5, but how Galatians 5 talks about where we actually fall out of grace when we're trying to like, submit to any sort of law in our own strength because we're under self-righteousness. And actually, here, I'll read it really quick. In Galatians 5, it says, You've fallen away from grace, from God's gracious favor and unmerited blessing, for we not relying on the law, but through the Holy Spirit's help, by faith, anticipate and wait for the blessing and good for which our righteousness and right standing with God, our conformity to his will in purpose, thought, and action causes us to hope. So all that to be said a couple of days ago, like uh, I was praying and I was just kind of before the Father and I've been sharing with you guys, that's just kind of where God's had me lately. I've just been like, had this like, you know, like picture of just being before God. And I did the last video I was doing where I felt like God was saying, I just want you to abide in my presence and my presence will transform you. And just so, you know, it talks about in Second Corinthians 3, taking us from glory to glory as we're just reflecting God's glory, as we're just abiding in his presence, it's transforming us, you know. So I've just been kind of in that place, but there was this old familiar feeling that started coming up that I wanted to share with you guys. 
because I know the Holy Spirit's exposing it so we can just come into a greater freedom. And so I was just kind of in this place of just kind of acknowledging God. And then I started feeling like this feeling that I felt so often of like, my formula is not working. Like I'm, I'm acknowledging you, Father, but it's like I'm getting distracted really easy. And I'll find myself like wanting to like, like I wanting to perform to try to get back into God's good graces. And it's so frustrating because when God will give revelation or he'll be like, okay, this is a season of, I, I want you to do this. I'll religiously make a formula out of it and I'll end up putting my faith in this thing that I'm supposed to be doing as opposed to God. And I know it's happening and it's so frustrating because there's nothing I can do about it. So I've learned to just kind of wait on God instead of thinking or trying to figure it out or performing. I'm just kind of like, I'll just wait on God for the Holy Spirit to bring revelation light, which then redirects me to the truth. He just washes me off as he's redirecting me to Jesus. So I was kind of in that place the other day when I was praying and I was sitting there and I was just kind of like feeling distant from God, you know, and I'm just like, okay, God, like, you know, what am I supposed to do? And it was so cool because in that place, I've always called it religion. Like, man, I'm like, how religious am I, God? And he's like, you don't want to know. Like, because I just will make a formula out of everything because I feel like I can control it when I'm making it a formula or just a performance. And so, and it can be the stuff, it can be stuff that seems so godly too. Like I'm, I can make a performance out of like, re, like uh, worshiping or praying in tongues or just whatever it may be, intercession. Like I can respond to what I thought was religion, but it was so cool because the other day the Holy Spirit revealed it as self-righteousness. He goes, as soon as you start feeling yourself being distanced, distant from God, you start trying to use God to make the feeling go away. And instead of coming to God and glorifying Him as you're trusting Him, you start trying to perform because you're afraid of what you're feeling or what the enemy's doing is bigger than what God's doing. And I shared a couple of videos ago just about that whole revelation of the enemy's trying to steal God's glory because the enemy wants our attention on what he's doing as opposed to our attention being on the Father and responding to him through just worship and praise. And when he showed me that the other day, he's like, what you're feeling is self-righteousness. I'm like, oh my gosh, it makes perfect sense. I'm trying to get right with God by focusing on myself, by performing, as opposed to me just being like, God, may you be glorified. I'm trusting you, Jesus. I'm right with the Father because of your righteousness, the righteousness that I have through faith in you. And we can say that and be like, yeah, of course I trust God. I'm righteous in him. But for me, I've found it to be a moment to moment, second to second. I'm learning to abide in Jesus. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind. And it was super cool because I'm like, oh, he had just kind of washed me off. And I'm like, that's so awesome. I know when I'm feeling that it's not religion, it's self-righteousness. I'm trying to get right, just like the Jews by like using a formula and what I'm doing, like I said, is I'm making what I'm feeling or what the enemy's doing bigger than God's faithfulness because I start going into like fear. Or I start going into fear of like, oh my gosh, like am I doing something wrong or just whatever. And hopefully you guys can, that speaks to you guys because like I said, it's something that's been coming on, like up over and over again my whole life. But thank God the Holy Spirit always just redirects me to Jesus, you know. <clears throat> and so I was writing a little bit after that, just after that rev and just kind of like praying on it. And it was so cool because I felt like God brought up John 16. And in John 16, <clears throat> before Jesus ascends, he tells him, he's like, it's good that I go be with my father. I'm going to send the comforter and he's going to like convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And so I've done videos I've taught on like sin, how our sin isn't our performance. I love how it says it's our basic unbelief in Jesus. That's the root of sin. Adam and Eve fell because they believed something about God and that wasn't true and then functioned from that place. And it's the same with us. Like it's our unbelief. And I've done videos before to where I was like, 
there would, I feel like the Holy Spirit said there'd be nothing to repent from if our eyes never came off of Jesus because we're going to function from that reality instead of gratifying ourselves, you know, we're actually like being satisfied in him so we can live for the glory of God. And that's where he's bringing us to. So anyways, I was writing and the part of John 16 that I've just been asking God for like probably 25 years, like, what does that mean? I need revelation on it. It wasn't about the Holy Spirit convicting us of sin or judgment. Like I've gotten revelation on both of those. It was where it says the the Holy Spirit's going to convict the world of righteousness because I'm going to go be with my Father and He won't see me anymore. And I'm like, what does that mean? Like, you know, what does that mean? He's going to the Holy Spirit. He's sending the Holy Spirit to convict the world of righteousness because you're going to go be with the Father, and. Like, I've just been asking God about that. Every time I read that scripture, I'm like, I'm not, I know there's revelation here. Like, I can make sense of kind of what I think it means, but I need revelation. And it was so cool because what I felt like the Holy Spirit said the other day is he's like, those things aren't necess- they're separate, but they all come together. Like, sin, our unbelief in Jesus keeps us in self righteousness and it keeps us out of the true righteousness that's only found in Jesus. And it says in that scripture, like, because the enemy's already been judged. He convicts the world of the judgment because the enemy's already been judged. And I don't even want to get into that right now. But it's so cool because I felt like he was saying, it's my job as the comforter, as the one that leads you back into all truth, the one that leads you into what you've been, you've been given in Jesus, like who he is, the fullness of him. It's my job to convict you when you start getting into performance or self-righteousness to redirect you to faith in Jesus because he's the only source of righteousness. And the only place you're going to find true righteousness is before the Father where Jesus is. And when we're trying to perform, we're in that place of just being, in a sense, under the second heaven where we're trying to perform to get to God. And there's only one way that we have access to the Father, which is through our faith in Jesus, acknowledging Jesus. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's making sense for the first time ever. I knew there was this this revelation that you wanted to bring to it. And since then, I think that was two days ago, he's just been bringing more and more revelation about it. And it's so incredibly simplistic because I know he's exposing self-righteousness. So we're just free. We're free to glorify the Father in ways we never have before. Because when we're feeling like, oh my gosh, am I doing something wrong? Or is God disappointed in me? Or what am I supposed to be doing? We're focusing on self. And I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, that's the difference between righteousness and self-righteousness, is me removing the self. Because there's nothing you can do, there's no performance that you can make to earn righteousness. Our righteousness is something that Jesus paid for with our life, with his life, that we can only find through faith in him. So does that make sense to you guys? And so I wanted to read a, a scripture that I feel like is so... Amazing. Uh, Second Corinthians five is one of those scriptures that just, or one of those chapters that just keeps giving. There's so much in Second Corinthians five, just be, us being reconcilers, being the given the ministry of reconciliation, like ambassadors of Christ. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to read the last scripture. This is the Passion Translation because there's such a rad note in here. So I'm going to read from Second Corinthians five. Let's see, twenty. It says, we are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message of Christ to the world as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips, reconciling people back to the Father. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf, turn back to God and be reconciled to him. For God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through union with him. Isn't that amazing? And then in the note it says, this one verse is perhaps the greatest verse in the New Testament to describe our salvation through the sinless Savior and his substitutionary death on the cross. I'm impressed that I just said that. Substitutionary death on the cross. A wonderful divine exchange took place at the cross, and all of our sins were left there. 
Our guilt was removed and forever gone. And we walked away with all of God's righteousness. How crazy is that? What bliss is ours. Every believer today possesses the perfect and complete righteousness of Christ. We are seen by the Father as righteous as his Son. And that is the most incredible news ever, that we can't earn it. We can't, we don't deserve it, but it's been given to us through the perfect sacrifice of our Father's Son. But the enemy can bring us into this place of us not believing that and believing we need to perform to try to earn it, which is actually pulling us out of grace. It's pulling us pulling us out of that place like Galatians 5 says. So I just wanted to pray with you guys that God would just continue to expose and remove any self-righteousness that we're free knowing that we can come before the Father because of the righteousness that we have in Jesus. And so, Lord, I just thank you, God, for just that word and just that revelation, Lord. And we just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the one as we start getting into self-righteousness, God, and we start trying to figure out what we've done or what we need to do, God, where we're focusing on ourselves, Lord. I thank you how you just redirect us back, Lord. You convict us, Lord, of our righteousness, God. That's only found through faith in you, Jesus. And I think it was just Romans 8, the, the message version says, instead of focusing on self, focus on God. And instead of redoubling our efforts, embrace what the Spirit of God is doing within us. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God, for just that redirection. And I just pray, Lord, that you would show us when we're coming under that self-righteousness, Lord, that we would be able to recognize it and we would be able to turn to you and that our focus, Jesus, would be on you, not on our performance. So we would be perfectly positioned before you, Father, to just glorify you and to worship you, thanking you in all things, rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, just loving you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, God, so we could overflow with that love onto the people around us. And I just pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.